God's morning, everybody. Um, it's coffee with ice. I got my coffee right here. It's a good cup of coffee. Good cup of joe right there. It's the holiday season, you know, so it's the, the season to be jolly. Uh, Tis the season to be jolly. Today's uh, topic that I want to speak about is the weight of the weight. Um, when we're waiting on things and uh, things that we pray for, things that we, we feel that uh, should be coming to us and we carry that weight inside of us, it, it is like a burden. It's like carrying a weight because, you know, let's pray for let's pray to God and then release it and let God do what he's doing instead of carrying that weight and, and every day just worrying about it and, and what's going to happen, is, am I going to get it today, you know, whatever... Uh, you know, this uh, breakthrough is going to happen, you know, when is it going to be? Is it going to be right now? You know, because uh, we live in a time now where in social media days and everything where weight is like a four letter word. I mean, we want everything right now. We want it's a click of a button away and we want it instantaneous. You know, as soon as, hey, I, I need this. Boom. Let me go get it. Bam. You know what I mean? And try to take it all under uh, our own control, which is uh, never the right thing to do. Um so I want to speak a, bit, a little bit about that. You know, if you're in a waiting period right now where you're waiting on something, I hope this speaks to you, gives you a, a little bit of um, a direction to go. You know, I always lead people right back to the Bible. So, um, you know, let's go ahead and uh, get into this because uh, I believe that God got this word for somebody. You know, sometimes I have to speak to myself. That's what God usually tells me, you know, what, what, what do you want me to, uh, to tell the people? You know, and he usually tells me just speak to yourself because what you're going through, other people are going through. Amen. So um, I want to open up with a, a, a quote by C.S. Lewis, which is going to speak volumes to what I'm going to go into today. And it just says, uh, I am sure that God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. You know, that, that right there. I'm going to read it again. I am sure that God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. You know, waiting, be, the Bible says, you know, be still, you know, um, I'm going to go into that a little bit later because there was a, a testimony that I have to share that it, it, it's a, it, it'll, it'll speak, I believe. Um, and I, I believe this word here that I'm going to say, I hope I'm saying it right, but it's the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk. And it's a two verse three. And it says, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of an end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. You know, God's going to bring that, that the reveal on his time. You know, and it speaks of the end and will not prove false. So whatever it is, it's from God. It's true. You know, take it how it is. However you're bringing it to me, God, I, I, I receive it. I take it. Um, I accept it. You know, um, his word is final. His word is true. His word is, uh, never comes back void. And it says, though it linger, wait for it. You know, um, the lingering is the tough part. You know, things that are in limbo all the time. You know, what, what, what's going on? What is happening? You know, I, I've been praying for this. What's, um, I'm just sitting here and nothing's happening. That's the tough part. Um, but it says, wait for it. You know, be still. Be still. You know, just stand on his word. And, and even if the, the revelation doesn't come in, in, a, in your time, you know, in God's time, it will, one way or the other. It will certainly come and will not delay. You know, God's timing is not our time. His ways are not our ways, amen? So um, I just wanted to uh, give you a, a brief testimony. I, I shared it before, but I want to share it on, on this uh, this episode here that um, these uh, shows that I'm doing here on um, YouTube, I just wanted to share it here. To, hopefully it reaches and, and speaks to who it's supposed to reach and... Um, you know, kind of encourages somebody else that is going through or went through something that I went through. But uh, in 2015, uh, I was going through a divorce and, um, you know, me and my wife just didn't work out. Things didn't happen and we just couldn't repair it. And, um, you know, she decided she wanted to leave and I tried to do everything that I could. Uh, you see, I have a VBF shirt on. I was with VBF for about uh, five, five or six years, I believe. And um, there was a pastor there that would uh, speak to me and, and give me directions to try, try this with her, try this. So I would try it. Uh, didn't work. I'd be like, hey, uh, pastor, this didn't work. You know, do you have any more advice? He's like, I'll try this. You know, I tried this. And then one day I just got a, a text at work and it said, uh, 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 she gave me a date that she was leaving. And so I, I called up my uh, pastor, told him, 
and he said, just let her go, you know, just let her go, you know, and when she's gone and the same issues that are coming up, she can't blame you because you're not there for him, you know, so just let her go, you can't, you can't make somebody stay, so just let her go, so I made a decision, and it was a tough one, you know, um, so she moved out, and she decided to move out and uh, let me keep everything, the house and everything. She just took a, a lot of the furniture and stuff like that. But, you know, the the house and everything was on me. So I was just starting to uh, stress out, like, how am I going to be able to take care of this with the job that I have? You know, take all the bills upon myself and, you know, take care of the kids at the same time. And, you know, I was stressing out about it because I couldn't do it with the income I was having making. So I started reaching out to, um, you know, placing uh, my resume everywhere and got a couple, couple bites and a couple offers that... They just weren't the right fit, so I turned them down. I was getting pretty close to uh, that that first uh, mortgage bill, and you know I got a a, a job offer for a, a manager at a, a pretty big company here in Bakersfield, and uh, but it was going to be a graveyard position. You know, it was going to take me. Uh, you know, my children were a big factor in my decisions. You know, I didn't want to, couldn't leave them here by themselves at night. Um, so I, I kind of made a decision to to accept it because I needed it. So I accepted it. Um, I, was, I was like, I'm just going to figure out, you know, after I, I, it starts, you know, how am I, what am I going to do with the kids? How am I going to take care of that with the working graveyard? I can't leave them here by myself. So I, I was worried about, I was going to worry about that later, but I needed that position. I needed that money. So um, the next day, it just so happened that my supervisor came down from Fontana, California, and he was, um, he just came in to visit and I told him, hey, I'm going to have to put my two weeks in. And he's like, What? And um, the, the crazy thing is that we had just gotten a raise and he's like, man, why didn't you tell me you're going through all this stuff? And I go, man, you guys just gave us a raise. I didn't want to seem ungrateful and ask for more. And he's all, man, you should have came to me and should have told us. He's all, well, let me, let me call up Bob, who's our super or uh, vice president of the company. Actually, he's the president of the company. And uh, so he called Bob and talked to him and Bob called me up and says, Isaac, I hear you have to leave. I go, yeah, I have to, man. He's all, do you want to or do you have to? I go, I have to. I don't want to. You know, this job, I love it. But he's all, well, I can't do, I can't offer you what they're offering you, but if I come close, will you stay? And I was like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll stay. Yeah, heck yeah, dude. I'll be, I'll, you know, I'll be very grateful. <laughs> um, so I had been praying for a specific number, a specific number. I've been in prayer for a specific number. As soon as she said, I'm leaving, I was praying for a specific dollar amount that I would have to make to a penny in order to maintain my bills, maintain, you know, taking care of the kids, just maintaining a, a healthy lifestyle. So I was praying for a specific penny. Let me just put that out there. So he calls me back the next day and says, hey, I can offer you this, you know, um, will you stay? And I said, I can't, I can't do it for that. I, I wish I could. I just can't, you know, I'm thankful and grateful for your, what you're offering, but I just can't do it. And, um, he says, well, give me a number. So I gave him a number, but it was lower than the number I was praying. I didn't want to seem ungrateful. So I, I gave him a number, dollar amount that was under what I was praying for. So he said, well, let me see what I could do. You know, the only thing I could do is just run it by the upper, you know, the, the owners. And so he did that, called me back the next day. And, um, you know, right, right before this, right before I, I revealed this, I want to tell you that I finally took it to prayer. I finally took it to prayer. I was not praying about this. I, I mean, I wasn't praying for the dollar amount, but I wasn't praying for for uh, to it to happen like this. You know, it was just uh, something that, you know, God's timing, you know. So I was praying for that, that specific dollar amount. You know, I didn't think it was going to be at the job that I was at. You know, I thought it was going to be at another job. But God told me one night in service, he told me, be still, you know, be still. And after I heard that, I was a little bit calmer, you know, a little bit calmer. So anyways, the, the president of the company calls me back and he tells me, Isaac, I can offer you this. And the offer that he gave me was the offer to a penny of the amount that I was praying for. More than what I had asked him for pre the day before, but to a penny of what I was praying to God for. You know, God could have immediately said, hey, I'm going to have this guy offer you what you need right off the bat instead of wait. You know, what was the waiting for? I, I'm not too sure. You know, I, I never really dove into what was the waiting, you know, these few days uh, wondering. But um, there's beauty in every journey. You know, when you find that beauty in the journey, you know, it's it's key to overcoming that, you know. So um, 
you know, that, that's what happened there. You know, I happily accept it. I didn't have to lose any time with my kids, had to lose any time with church, didn't have to lose uh, my, my nights going to sleep, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it was a, a great thing there that God came through and answered a prayer for me, you know, but I had to wait, you know, from, <clears throat> from the time that, that she told me she wanted the divorce, that she wanted to leave, I had to wait, you know, until God came through, you know, um, I try to overcome on my own, you know, trying to, to do things to pass time, you know, um, but it's God's timing, you know, it's all God's timing. You know, it says, uh, Hebrews 11, one, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11, one, I'm going to read it again. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith, confidence in what we hope for. God, I know you're going to come through. I'm confident. You know, I'm waiting. I got to be still. You know, it's tough. It's tough, but man, confidence. Confidence, man. He's going to come through. God is going to come through no matter what. Assurance about what we do not see. Assurance. Woo, that's a tough one. Of what we do not see. Assurance. Wow. That, that's tough. That's tough right there because... We don't see the end line. We don't see the end result. We don't see all of that until it happens, you know. Um, so to have an assurance that, hey, this is going to happen the way that I'm praying for, the way that God has it intended for me, that is tough to do. But the word tells us to do it, you know. And I feel and I believe that these scriptures and this quote right here is helping us to understand the weight of the weight. You know, we don't have to carry that weight. The assurance about what we do not see, the confidence in what we hope for, a revelation at an appointed time, you know, um, it will certainly come and will not delay. Though it linger, wait for it. You know, if we do those things and use those things and put those into work when we're waiting for something, that weight is going to come off of us. We're going to have that confidence that God's word says. I am sure that God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. I hope it's good. I'm going through something too. So, you know, I, I pray that, um, you know, this right here uh, touches somebody and it, it um, you know, helps you uh, direct yourself into the right directions and gives you that confidence and the assurance that God's word says and um, just lifts a little bit of the weight of the weight off of you. God bless you guys.